Hello and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here another 10 pens currently inked up this week. I think let's go through these briefly one by one. We'll go through them in a little bit more detail and then we'll do a writing sample. So from left to right, we have a Montegrappa Extra 1930 and this is in the striped zebra celluloid. We have a Montegrappa Extra Otto in the pearl and grey celluloid. We have a Visconti Homo Sapiens London Fog. We have a Visconti Millionaire. We have a Yarda Lead, and this is the Grand Vice Away in the Victorian. We have another Yardo Lead, and this is the Grand Vice Away in the Barley Corn, or Barley for short. We have a Tatcha Miami Winter's Breath. We have a Danny Trio, and this is the Moonlit Grass. We have a Ryan Crusack Legend 16 in the Dragon Slayer. And we have a London Pen Company, and this is the Nona 14 in uh, Bohemian Twilight. So I think let's take a look at these pens in a little bit more detail. This is the very, very beautiful Montegrappa Extra 1930 in the striped zebra celluloid. That celluloid really, really does come to life there. Beautiful celluloid. This is why I like celluloid pens. Uh, they are flammable and, and quite flammable. So you do have to be careful. You don't want to store these next to a light source. Uh, or I say a light source, more, more of a, a naked flame. Uh, because you do risk them going up in, in, in flame. But these are beautiful pens. Uh, I love this to bits. Uh, it is a piston filling pen. You have... Uh, 1912 there on the cap finial and uh, beautiful celluloid and it is an oversized pen comes with a solid silver section a number eight size a montagrappa nib with an ebonite feed and these are actually very very comfortable in the hand a little bit more front weighted because of the silver section you can post the cap but it's something I normally warn against because you're posting it on the back of the piston knob there. So if you get a twist to pull that off, you're going to be twisting the piston knob. So that's one thing to bear in mind with uh, a lot of the, I think probably most, if not all, of the Montegrappa Extra 1930s. You do have to be a little bit careful if you are going to be posting those caps. The next pen here is the Montegrappa Extra Otto in this beautiful pearl grey celluloid. Uh, I really do like the uh, Montegrappa Extra Ottos. I do find that the faceted pen makes it look a lot better. Uh, I do like this pearl grey celluloid, which I'd like to get a few more Montegrappas in. And I love the very chunky and also the, the design pattern on that Extra Otto cap band there as well it just really looks the part and that pearl gray celluloid really does sparkle uh, it is a piston filling pen again and it also another solid silver section that you can it will tarnish you can polish and uh, it's a number eight size montagrappa nib with an ebonite feed there is a piston filling pen now this actually posts a lot deeper so it, this posts way beyond the piston fill-in knob. So if you are a cap poster and you want a Montegrappa, I honestly would go for the extra Otto because that allows you to securely and deeply post that cap without any problem whatsoever. The next pen I have in my collection here and I do have inked up this week is the Visconti Homo Sapiens London Fog. A uh, beautiful pen. This was my very first Grail pen. Uh, just amazing pen. Uh, I, I've told this story many times where my uh, highest value pen was effectively a Waterman Karen, which I got for £75. Uh, it was on discount on Amazon at the time. 
just a plain black one. Uh, I loved how the, it was my first gold nib. I loved how that nib wrote. And then I transitioned from that to this, which was a pen that was six times more the cost. But I love the writing experience even more. So this is, uh, now, interestingly, Visconti actually call this a celluloid pen. It is, I would say, not a celluloid pen. It does have celluloid in it. The, the cap, the section, the power back knob are all resin. These lovely swirl patterns inside are actually celluloid. So is the whole pen celluloid? No. Does it have celluloid in it? Yes, it does. But it's a very small amount. Uh, the nib here is a 23 cap palladium. It's a fine nib. Visconti don't do ebonite feeds, unfortunately. So it is an ABS plastic feed. But honestly... Uh, most manufacturers use Ebonite to have the pens write wetter. Visconti don't need that. They already have wet writing pens with an ABS plastic feed. So it's my belief that that's why they've never actually gone the Ebonite route. Plus Ebonite actually, it costs more to try and manufacture those feeds than it does an ABS plastic feed. So uh, it wouldn't add much, probably 15 euros, pounds, dollars to the cost of the pen maybe 30 maybe maximum but it wouldn't be a lot but still uh it, it's it's something that they don't need so why why go for something you don't need uh, because it's just if you've got an abs plastic feed that works stick with it the next pen i have inked up here this week i had it inked up a few weeks back it's the, uh, the visconti million air and uh, this is a solid marble pen, uh, quite heavy, um, beautiful pen, and uh, the the marble has been cut quite thick, so it adds weight to the pen. Uh, the filling mechanism, though, is a little bit strange. It's an old style push pull. Uh, they say it's a piston. Is it a piston? I guess it is. It is a piston that goes up and down. Uh, press to empty, uh, pull to fill, um, and I'm going to re-ink this one back up very shortly. Um, but this is a beautiful pen. Uh, can I post the cap? You can do. It won't pass post past uh, that metal ring there, so it doesn't post that deeply, uh, and it's also very back weighted. You can post it though. Um, I'll give you that. And if if you are a cap poster. Um, then that's fine. The cap is actually a very long cap compared to what you see there on the body. So uh, that's why it does make it quite long when you post that cap onto the end of the body there. The next pen here is a pen. It's a growl pen, a pen that I wanted for a very long time. I managed to find one. I managed to pick one up. I was almost about to go and buy one brand new but the brand new prices in the last five or so six years have almost doubled because uh, it is a solid silver pen. So as much as I didn't want to pay the full price, I was almost about to. And then I actually saw this one going second hand and I managed to actually buy it for about half the price. And not only that, I also managed at the same time to buy its sibling so I actually got two pens really for the price of one. They both were used, but that doesn't bother me. It's a, a Yarda Lead Grand Viceroy. It's a Victorian. And I have to say, it's a pen I have always wanted. That pattern uh, is created by around 3,500 hammer strikes to the silver uh, by a silversmith to create that pattern. It is a push to click cap. It's not threaded. I kind of wish these were threaded, to be honest. Uh, and it has a number six size yard of lead nib. It's a fine nib. They are cartridge converters. Uh, can you post the cap? You can, and it posts fairly deeply. I do find it's a bit back weighted, though, because of that silver, although the cap is a lot lighter than the body. Uh, but uh, I, I do, I'm not a fan of the push to click caps uh, I do or the snap I know some people want snap caps uh, but I do prefer the threaded caps uh, but that said I still love that that pen a lot 
And then the sibling, as I mentioned, I uh, also picked up at the same time. Uh, this I'm not so enamored with in terms of the pattern. Um, it's a nice pattern, but it's not something... If if this pen was just on, on sale on its own, I wouldn't probably have bought it. But I had decided because of the price of... Uh, both these pens were half price compared to a new pen. And... I also thought it would be a little bit strange just having one of these in my collection. I decided to buy both of them because they were both on sale from the same seller. Uh, again, a push to click cap. Um, again, a number six size Yardo lead nib. This is a medium, though, no, not fine. Again, a cartridge converter pen. Uh, can you post the cap on here? Yes, and quite deeply and securely. Um, these are cartridge converter pens and uh but they are lovely they are lovely pens uh i don't know how much i don't think this is hammer textured but i might be wrong um i would have to look at the barleycorn uh have a look at their website but it's it's a beautiful um pattern for sure but i i do like the victorian a little bit more uh i was actually looking uh, on their website to see what other models they have it because these are the grand versions they don't actually have any other models i really wish that they'd come out with another one or two because i could see myself buying them because they are very very nice models the next pen i had it inked up last week is the tatcha Miami winter's breath beautiful pen it's a very large pen uh it's got crushed quail's eggs uh and also abalone shell uh, done uh, in a Mackie Varden, beautiful, beautiful colour pen. And so glad I, I added this to my collection. Uh, it has a number six size attached your nib. Uh, you can get the Empress model with a number eight size. They are cartridge converters. Do you want to post the cap? You can. It's Varden, it's Yurushi. I, I, I can't really feel any of this because the Yurushi lacquer the final lacquer is so uh, thick um but i still do worry about scratching that yurushi and maybe scratching it too deep that you're gonna have parts of this flake off so again it's not a pen that i would personally post a cap on but uh, a beautiful pen and so in order that i was able to add that to my collection and and pick one up because uh beautiful pen i'd like a few more of those but they are not cheap pens so i do have to think long and hard that was way over my price range i do have a lot of pens or quite a few pens that are over my price range that i'm prepared to pay but uh i do have to be more careful on buying those because it is a bit of a slippery slope the next pen, um, I do like a Yurushi and I do like Akatamanuri. This is an Akatamanuri like finish. It's a little bit more of a darker red though uh, than you see on a lot of Akatamanuri. Uh, this is the Danny Trio. It's the moonlit grass. So you have the moon there effectively lighting the grass there on the uh, back end of the pen. A beautiful pen and I can feel this. Um, it, it actually feels, I can feel lines where the grass is. And also over here as well, over this writing and over the moon as well. So uh, again, this is a pen that you're not going to want to probably post. Uh, you also have some lovely stars here in the section, which I think is a really lovely touch. The uh, artist's uh, signature there as well. Uh, this is a number six size a Danny Trio Fireball Nib. It's a cartridge converter. A lot of Danny Trios are actually uh, eyedropper. I have the uh, Bamboo Story that is an eyedropper. And, um, but that's the only Danny Trio I have that's an eyedropper. Uh, my other Danny Trios are all cartridge converter. And to be honest, I prefer the cartridge converter over the eyedropper. I'm always a little bit concerned taking eyedropper pens out that they might leak into my my rucksack and, and make a bit of an inky mess but I don't have that concern with the cartridge converter the next pen I have inked up here is a beautiful pen made by Ryan Crusack this is a legend 16 
So it's the largest uh, version of the pen he currently makes. And uh, you can see here it's a wood cap with this lovely dragon scale. Uh, it's called the Dragon Slayer because you have a dragon there as well as a dragon slayer. It's getting a little bit hot under the collar, I would say. But this is a beautiful, beautiful work of art. You've got Ryan Crusack's signature there. 99 of 150. Beautiful pen. I do want a few more from him. Uh, I will probably uh, look to see... Uh, if I do order another pen from him, I could see myself ordering two or three. Um, they... I think at the moment I, there's really only one pattern that really does stand out to me and I, I will just have to see uh, what will come of that maybe. Maybe I will just order one, maybe I'll order a couple. Uh, I, I will wait and see but I definitely think I will have more Ryan Crusack pens. It is a cartridge converter, number six size, Yovo nib on that, uh, very nice uh, pen. Another pen which is very nice is Sean at the London Pen Company, he makes these newer Nona 14. Um, and Nona is a nine faceted pen. Again, I love facets on pens. I like it on this extra Otto. And I have to say, I like it on this Nona 14 as well. I also really like the, the material here from Jonathan Brooks at the Carolina Pen Company. This is the Bohemian Twilight material. Uh, Sean hasn't polished his material, so you've got this lovely turquoisey, coppery, irony sort of uh, look and feel to the pen. It looks beautiful uh, with a uh, number six size Bock nib. Uh, this is a broad nib, cartridge converter. Absolutely love it. You can't post the caps; it's not designed to do so. And honestly, I I, I think this is long enough as it is. But Sean did say to me that uh, he is likely going to be making some longer versions of this pen. So. If you do think that the Nona 14, if I put it in the size of my hand, if you do think you need one that is a little bit longer, he's probably going to make a, a longer one. He may also be making a 15 and a 16 uh, diameter thread there as well uh, to make the, the whole body and the section a little bit wider. So uh, watch uh, this space for that one because I think there will be more Nonas coming out in the near future from Sean at the London Pen Company. So that's my county ink pens for this week. I think let's now go and do a writing sample. So the first pen here is the Montegrappa Extra 1930 in the Striped Zebra. So I think let's do uh, an ink swatch here. And this is uh, an interesting ink. It looks like it's a black or a very dark gray, but it is not. It's actually a colored ink which is quite surprising. So this is the Montegrappa Extra 1930, and it's in the Striped Zebra, and it's a celluloid. And it's a medium, and it's an 18 cat gold nib. And then the ink in here is Diamine, grape which is an interesting ink because it's not a black ink it is a very very dark purple ink almost black but an interesting ink the next pen is a montegrappa extra otto in the pearl gray celluloid so we'll do an ink swatch here and this is uh, a lovely wet writing nib even for a grey ink, uh, so I do like this quite a bit. Um, and this is a uh, Montegrappa Extra Otto, and uh, it is in the pearl grey celluloid. And it is a medium, and again, an 18 cat gold nib. And then the ink in here is uh, Venvistus. And it is a London Fog. 
which I have to say is a beautiful grey ink and an ink that is becoming a favourite of mine in terms of grey inks. I have Diamine Earl Grey and I have this one now. The next pen here is the Visconti Hammer Sapiens London Fog. So we'll do an ink swatch. And again, another wet writing nib. Uh, this is a fine nib though, but this is what made me fall in love with a lot of Viscontis. Not only the material, but also how it writes. So this is the Visconti Homo Sapiens London Fog. And it is a fine, and it's a 23 cat palladium nib. And then the ink in here is Pilot Awashizuku. And it is Con Heki. Now, I'm going to be emptying, so this pen uh, has a little bit of ink there. I'm going to be emptying this one out because uh, I, it has, uh, I, I've had it inked up for a few weeks now. So I think it's time to flush it out and put it back into storage. The next pen here is the Visconti Millionaire. So we'll do an ink swatch here. And again, a lovely wet writing nib. Uh, I do like the colour of this ink as well. So this is a Visconti Millionaire. And it is a medium and it is a 23 cat palladium nib. And then the ink in here is at Aurora and Klinger. Oops. There you go. And it is a Alt or Old uh, Bordeaux. Which for me is a beautiful ink. I just love how it writes in that pen and I have always inked it up. The next pen is the Yarder Lead. It's a Grand Viceroy in the Victorian. So we'll do an ink swatch here. And how I normally, in most cases, match the color of ink to a pen. How do I match the color of ink uh, in a silver colored pen? Well, I could always put a gray ink, I guess, in there. Uh, I could put a sparkly silver ink in there. But uh, I decided I would uh, put uh, a orange ink in, or more of a reddish ink, reddish orange, orange red ink in this one. So this is the Yard O Lead, and it is the Grand uh, Victorian. And it's a fine, and it's an 18-cat gold nib. And then the ink in here is Noodlers. And I nearly put Apache Sunset in here, but I realized that I also have my Ryan Crusade with that. So I inked this up originally at the time with another one called Habanero. And I have to say that uh, since using that, I stuck with it. And I have to say I do like that ink. The next pen inked up is again another Yard OLED and it's a Grand uh, Viceroy. And this is in the Barleycorn or Barley for short. So we'll do an ink swatch here. And at the time, inking it up, it had a green converter in it, uh, which is what Yardo Lead actually provide. And I just thought, hey, why don't I just, if I've got red in one, why don't I just ink the other one up in green? And I was looking at my greens, and it was like, oh, well, I could play it safe and go with Diamine Apple Green, Diamine Meadow. Um, I could go with a darker Sherwood Green from Diamine. And then I just thought, you know what, I've got this ink and I'm going to ink it up. Uh, and this is a different ink. So this is a Yard O Lead Rand. And it's the Barley, Barley Corn. Uh, it's a medium and it's an 18 cat gold nib. And then the ink in here is, uh, again, another Aurora and Klinger. And it is a Verdura. 
which is a beautiful uh, green ink. Um, and I do like that color ink. I have actually thought about putting it in the next pen, to be honest. And this is the Tatcha Miyabi Winter's Breath, but I haven't. Um, but I still am tempted to. So we're doing ink swatch here. I still have the trusty blue that I had in it last week. And I have to say that this is a beautiful blue. A blue that I like a lot. So this is the Tatcha uh, My Abbey Winter's Breath. And it's a broad uh, and it's a, a, an 18 cat gold nib. And again, because this nib, it's a Tatcha nib, it's made by Sailor. Um, the broad typically is more like a Western medium. So uh, I'm really glad I went with the broad on this one. So the ink in here is uh, Pelican Edelstein Topaz. And still think, because there, there is a lot of green here um, in that pen, I still think I could put the Roar and Klinger Verdure in that pen, but I still love the Topaz. So I think, unfortunately, at the moment, the Topaz still wins. The next pen inked up is the Danny Trio Moonlit Grass. We'll do an ink swatch here. And I do like uh, the nib on this. Uh, quite a nice uh, nib. And I just find it, it writes quite nicely. And just double checking the nib there. So this uh, is a Danny trio uh, and it is the moonlit grass and i was just double checking it because i thought it was it is a fine it's an 18 cat gold nib uh it's a dang trio fireball nib and then the ink in here is um diamine poppy red but that uh, is a, a very, very nice pen. Uh, I do like it a lot. I'm glad I added that to my collection, like a lot of the pens that I have added, including this one, which is the Ryan Crusack Legend 16 in the Dragon Slayer. Beautiful pen. So in awe that I was able to add this. Uh, I reached out to Ryan and said, look, I really want one of these pens. Uh, can you make it happen? Uh, it was just soon after he'd um, announced that he was having problems with his shoulder and that he might not be making a lot of pens. Uh, and he said, hey, look, I'm <laughs> I'm making a bunch for the next pen show, so I'll make you one. Uh, I'll make you an extra one. So I'm like, yeah, great. So uh, this is the Ryan Crusack uh, Legend 16 in the Dragon Slayer. And uh, it's a medium. Uh, it's a still Yovo nib. Uh, I think probably maybe when I get my next Ryan Crusoe, I will, I will probably go with a broad nib. Uh, nothing wrong with the medium. I just typically do like a bit more of a broader nib. Uh, saying that, I've got um, some fine nibs like in the London Fog there. Um, the ink in here is uh, Noodler's Apache sunset which uh, again beautiful ink uh i've had it since 2016 i think uh maybe 2017 i think 2016 and uh still uh have more than half a bottle of it so um i'm just using that ink a little bit more lately and then the last pen here is the london pen company known of 14 in bohemian twilight so we'll do uh, a final ink swatch here. This is a broad nib. And again, this is why I like the broad nibs. Uh, this is a Bok nib, though, not a Yovo nib, whereas the Ryan Crusack is a Yovo nib. So this is the London Pen Company Nona 14 
in Bohemian Twilight. And it's a broad and it's a still uh, Yovo, uh, not Yovo, still broad, still Bok nib. Um, and the ink in here is uh, Karen Dash or Karen Dash and uh, it is a vibrant green. Uh, but I think it's a good match for the pen, honestly. So I think let's take a look at these pens inked up one more time. We have a Montegrappa Extra 1930 in the Striped Zebra Celluloid in a medium 18 karat gold nib inked up with Diamine Grape. We have a Montegrappa Extra Otto in the Pearl Grey in a medium 18 karat gold nib inked up with Venustus London Fog. We have a Visconti Homo Sapiens London Fog in a fine 23 cap palladium nib inked up with Pilot of Washizuku Compeki. We have a Visconti Millionaire in a medium 23 cap palladium nib inked up with Rora and Klinger Alt Bordeaux. We have a Yarda Led Grand Victorian in a fine 18 cap gold nib inked up with L Noodler's Habanero. We have a Yardo Led and this is the Grand Barley in a medium 18 karat gold nib inked up with War and Klinger Verdura. We have a Tatcha Miami Winter's Breath in a broad 18 karat gold nib inked up with Pelican Edelstein Topaz. We have a Danny Trio Moonlit Grass in a fine 18 karat gold nib inked up with Diamine Hoppy Red. We have a Ryan Crusack Legend 16 in the Dragon Slayer in a medium Still Yovo nib inked up with Noodler's Apache Sunset. And then we have the London Pen Company Nona 14 in a Bohemian Twilight in a broad steel nib inked up with Karen Dash Vibrant Green. So there you have it. That's my currently ink pens for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye bye.